So hello and welcome along to another edition of Isolation Interviews for Hospital Radio Reading and for my YouTube channel. And uh, well, I'm super excited to be joined by a very talented actor in the form of Alex Walkinshaw. Thank you, Alex, for joining me. How are you? I'm very well, thank you very much. Enjoying the sunshine today. I was going to say, it's a very nice day today. So, uh, yeah, definitely nice, uh, ideal to be outside. So uh, I won't keep you for, for too long. Um, but, I mean, of course, there's so much to talk about recently with being a part of Holby City. I just wanted to first of all start off by asking, how did that show come about for you? Do you remember how you first became involved in the show? Well, originally, um, I was cast um, to be in Casualty. Um, and... Uh, casualties filmed in Cardiff in Wales so um, I got the part as Fletcher and worked in Cardiff and was carrying on there and and then it was just a bit too far to, to be sustainable for me um, I did do two years there um, two fantastic years I loved every minute of it it was a fantastic cast um, when I was there I loved you know, I had lots of old friends and, and got some really good new friends as well. But um, yeah, the, just the, the commute from Wales back to Kent was just not sustainable. So I spoke to the bosses and um, if people aren't aware, um, some of the bosses share the shows. So we have a serious producer on Casualty, a serious producer on Holby, but an executive producer on top of that, and they're in charge of both shows. So when I spoke to the series producer and said, you know, I've had a fantastic time here, but I can't keep driving backwards and forwards to Wales. They were, dis you know, not disappointed, but upset that, you know, it, it wasn't something that I could carry on doing. Um, and it was their idea to maybe pop me into Holby. Um, they didn't want to lose uh, the character. So I was the very first person to go from casualty to Holby. Normally, it's the other way around. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the other great thing as well with that is that you would have got to know Fletch, the character. So, to kind of continue with a character that you're already playing, but to play it in a new environment, was that a weird thing to get used to? Um, not necessarily, because, like you said, I'd already done two years as Fletch. So, I knew what he was, what he was doing. Um, and then it was just applying new surroundings which is always good because it gives you something else to be playing you know you don't know where this is you don't know where that is um also a, a, a new group of people to get to know um i decided that because it's the same hospital that there might be a couple of people that i already knew so i'd be a lot more relaxed with them and and sort of so it just gave me different things to play and different things to do so um, I mean, when I joined, the Holby, the Holby crew and the Holby cast were just that. Uh, they were just brilliant. Yeah, it felt like I'd been there forever. <laughs> and I mean, do you remember when, when obviously you first joined Casualty and the, the role of Fletcher came up? I mean, do you remember how, how you felt about the character? Do you remember kind of your initial thoughts on, on this character of Fletch? Well, I thought it'd be um, a nice change, really, because for a long time I'd been, you know, on the bill and my character had gone through several different, you know, evolutions, if you like. Um, um, and so he started off very quite uh, abrupt and saw things in, you know, black or white, and that was it. Um, and he sort of like grew up a bit on the bill and became sort of, you know, much more um, a nicer person to be around. Um, but was always very gung-ho, straight in, up for the challenge, up for the fight, up for you know, a foot chase, a car chase, all of those sorts of things. Everything I'm not. Um, and then Waterloo Road I did, and that was a bit, he was kind of very enthusiastic, but it was really quite wet and weak as a man. And I thought that was great, you know, it's nice to do something different. And so when Fletcher came up, it was a chance to be fun you know, a nice person, you know, do anything for anyone, heart on his sleeve, um, funny, good energy, you know, all the things that I didn't have from the previous jobs that I'd had. So, yeah, it was, it was really lovely to sort of tap into, you know, just a different area of, of acting, really. Well, not acting, but a different area of personality. 
And I mean, obviously, over the years, you know, Fletch has been involved in some amazing storylines and got to work with some amazing people. For you, has there been a personal favourite storyline to be a part of or people to work with? Ooh, I mean, that's a really tricky one because I've done quite a lot of continuing drama. But there have been some wonderful people that I've worked with, guest regulars. Um, There's just too many. I mean, each cast that I've worked with has just been so much fun. Um, And, you know, there's lots of mischief, lots of jokes, lots of winding people up. Um, but then lots of concentration, lots of good work and you know, lots of support. So it's really hard to pick out one person, although I do absolutely adore Guy Henry, who plays um, Henrik Hansen. Oh, I love that man. He's hysterical um, and, and such good fun. Very naughty, but such good fun. And I mean, obviously, over the years, you've, you know, you've having done different jobs, you've worked with, like you say, so many different people. It must be nice when you do one job, and then you go on to another one. And there are people that you've worked with before. I mean, obviously, uh, Jay Jacobs was on Waterloo Road with you. And then obviously on Holby. So it must be great to, to, to get to work with people on different projects. Well, yeah, I mean, Jay Jacobs is uh, my character's uh, wife on Waterloo Road. Rosie Marcel was Smithy's um, girlfriend on the bill um, but equally I've worked with lots of different people in all the shows so I've worked with people from Casualty and Holby on the bill I've worked with people from the bill and Casualty uh, yeah, on Holby and, and, all, and all the same so yeah it's just a massive like great big sort of you know roundabout of actors getting on and getting off into the different shows so it's lovely and I mean, obviously, you know, Fletch is such a great character. I mean, if you were to meet him in real life, do you think you'd get on? Do you think you'd be friends? I don't see why not. You know, you can be a bit of a wally, but then, you know, so can I. Sure you can. You know, most people can be. Um, so, yeah, I don't see why we wouldn't get on. And obviously, you know, with, with the, the, the end of Holby, which shocked a lot of people, a lot of people were, were, just didn't understand why it came to an end. But, I mean, to be a part of those final episodes, and, I mean, you know, they were fantastic. I mean, you, it must have been an honour to be able to kind of bring that show home and, and, and send it out in real style. Well, thank you. That's really kind of you to say that. Um, but, yeah, we're all really proud of, um, you know, especially sort of, you know, once the, the, the news that Holby was to be no more, um, we, yeah, everyone was very, very proud. And it was sad and upsetting and, um, you know, people had tears and, you know, people were angry, you know, they invested a lot of time. And it's not just that we're very proud of the final set of episodes. We're very proud of all the episodes of Holby, you know. Um, we just, yeah, we take pride in our work. We want it to be the best it can be. And that's from the top to the bottom, from left to right. Um, everyone is there and they all just want to make it better um, and so yes we are incredibly proud that we got to send Holby on its way with some really really fantastic episodes but also we're all incredibly proud of all of the episodes that came before and I mean obviously to see the final episodes where you know for anyone who hasn't seen it obviously spoiler alert but but to, to, to lose such a, an incredible character like Jack and to have her you know pass away what was going through your mind when you're reading that initially before you've even started acting it when you're reading it as a script what's going through your head as you see these final episodes well um we kind of knew what the story was going to be um so we're all a bit can't believe it um but then um I would laugh and joke around with Rosie and I would say it's about time. Um, <laughs> I'm a constant wind up to Rosie and myself. Uh, but then when the scripts actually came out and we sat down and read them, they're actually really sad to read. Um, and a lot of cast, you know, shed a tear and uh, found them really quite emotional. Um, yeah, it was, a, I mean, it was a big ending for a big show and, and a big character to go. 
And I mean, the other great thing as well was that, you know, any show like this, people love it when characters from the past come back. And obviously, Holby didn't disappoint with amazing cast members coming back, even if just briefly. I think it worked really well the way they did it. And I mean, for you seeing these faces come back, what was that like? Oh, brilliant. I mean, um, yeah, I've, I've been there for quite a while. So the people that came back, I knew them all. And um, it was just nice to sort of be in the Holby family, in the in the Holby sets together, just that one last time. Um, but yeah, I think what was important about seeing all those old faces was that as characters, they were all still within the NHS. They may have left the show, but you know, the NHS carries on and, and so did their careers. And, and uh, I think it just shows the depth and the breadth of the NHS. You know, it's not just one hospital. There are thousands of hospitals, you know, with, with, wonderful, with wonderful staff in them. I mean, of course, we got to see you briefly back on Casualty as well, kind of to wrap up that whole storyline. Was that fun to yeah. go back? Oh, it's always fun to go back to Casualty. So I've still got so many old mates over there. Um, and me and Derek get on really well. Um, so, so, yeah, it was, it was a delight. You know, it was only a, I was only there for an afternoon. Um, but I managed to catch up with a load of people and yeah, it was a lovely, it was a lovely day trip out. <laughs> <laughs> and I imagine that Except must be quite... I didn't get to go to Barry Island. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I imagine it must be quite tricky because obviously a lot of the final scenes were very emotional, were very sad. So for you to be playing that, you know, over a, you know, a long period of time, does that get quite tricky to be constantly playing these emotions? Um, I mean... <sighs> I don't know. I mean, me personally, as an actor, if they're really emotional, um, having to sort of like, you know, be, if, if you're crying or anything like that, you know, you can do that for a while, but then you just run out of tears and it's just, you know, you can't, it's hard to keep generating those kind of emotions over and over again for a really prolonged period of time. But, um, but, I mean, short, short spaces, it, it's all good. The only thing with doing emotional stuff like that is it becomes quite exhausting because you're sort of adopting a sort of state of mind and a, and a, and a feeling. And, and if you do that for too long, you just find it really exhausting. And then you go, you're sitting in the car on the way home feeling rubbish going, why do I feel so down? And it's because you've been, you've put yourself in that state for, you know, the last eight hours. Now, I mean, obviously the show has come to an end, but if for whatever reason, if one day the show was to make a return, would you go back? Do you think you would want to go back? Well, listen, it was a fantastic job. And I had a, I was really, really lucky. I had a character that I really liked and, you know, you know, a fair few people found him interesting and popular and they liked him. So yeah, I mean, you know, it'd be great fun, wouldn't it? You know, saving imaginary lives. Playing Let's Pretend. <laughs> now, I wanted to go back to where it all began for you. I mean, do you remember where the love of acting first came to you? You know, how, how it first came about? Well, I went, to a, I went to a normal comprehensive school. And I think it was like one, one day a week, the English lesson became a drama lesson, you know, as, as it does. And I really quite enjoyed it. And the school put on a production of Oliver and... And then I was in it and really enjoyed it. And, and I think it kind of stems from that, really. And my parents saying, right, you need to find yourself a hobby because you're not just going to hang around, you know, with all your mates outside, you know, getting up to no good. You're going to get yourself a hobby. And a friend of my sister's went to a theatre school um, and had left when she found out that I was quite enjoying it, she said, well, why don't you try Sylvia Young Theatre School? And she did, does a Saturday school. So, um, so I sort of, I went there to do a drama class um, and loved it. And then after that, Sylvia Young came up to me one day and she just, she just put on a show and, and I was in it. And she said, you need to come to my school full time. I was like, well, you best speak to my mom and dad. Uh, they had the conversation, and for the 
I think it was my third year in the senior. So what would that be? Seven, eight, nine. So year nine for the younger folk. Um, I went to Sylvia Young Theatre School full time, and and that was it. I was a an SA in Grange Hill, and that was my very first job. And and then I've just carried on since then. I mean, do you remember the first time that you kind of were famous? I mean, I know it's a sort of a weird thing to say, but do you remember the first time that people recognised you? That people kind of took an interest in your career? Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I did a sitcom when I was. 17 um, and we did a pilot and a couple of series of it and I got stopped a couple of times from people watching that and I found that incredibly weird um, because you know acting for me um, wasn't something I wanted to do to be famous it was a hobby that accidentally turned into a career um, so it was never something that had really been in the forefront of my mind, you know, oh, this is going to happen, that's going to happen. You know, I might not be fortunate enough to, to, to keep working and, and for people to, you know, say anything. Um, so, yeah, when that first started happening, it was, it was very strange. That's probably about 17, 18. But um, even to this day, I mean, I haven't done an episode, obviously, of The Bill in 11, nearly 12 years. And I still get boy smithy every day. It's, it's hysterical. <laughs> I mean, always be smithing. I was going to say because there's obviously you know how you've been involved in quite a few shows which have gone off the air, but that people really want to see back. I mean, there have been talks for years for the bill to come back. Whether yep. it'll happen, we don't know. But I mean, I imagine would would you want to be a part of that if it came back? I mean, I love being smithy. It was great fun. Um, I might be a little bit too old for all the foot chases now. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, in the right format, absolutely. Why wouldn't I? And we also know that Waterloo Road is coming back, and obviously that was a, a a big part of your life. So I mean, again, you know, to 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 do a show like Waterloo Road, and obviously you know that kind of was ever changing with its its amazing cast. To be a part of that, did, did you enjoy your time on Waterloo Road? How was that? Oh, it was great fun. Um, one of the one of the I think the nicest things and one of my favorite things to do is to work with younger actors um i think the energy i think the sort of the honesty of how they are and how they see things um is is really interesting and also you know i've been doing this for a long time and i think there are certain things that i could pass on that i've learned after you know i've been doing this for 35-ish years now um, and you know I'm still picking up stuff along the way so if I can pass on something that's taken me 20 years to figure out to someone who's you know this could be their first job or you know if I can just make it slightly easier for them I think that's you know my responsibility as a as a you know an older actor or senior actor or whatever, however one you, you want to you know dress it up I think it's good I learned from older actors and I think it's my responsibility to teach the younger actors certain things that can possibly help them. And I imagine as well that you can learn quite a lot from them as well at the same time, you know, different 100%. things. Yeah, just their approach, the, you know, staying current for one, um, you know, the, the way they are, the, you know, the, 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 the chat, the, the vocabulary that they use and also it's the energy, you know, and, and how they go about something. Because, like you say, you can learn something from anyone. They don't have to be, you know, within your peer group. You know, they can be younger, they can be older. It, it can come from anywhere, um, as long as you're open to learning. And what would you say is the greatest bit of advice you've ever been given uh, from someone? Um, um, I think it might have been when I was working with Liam Neeson. And he turned around and looked at me and said, get out of my eyeline. <laughs> I think, no, I don't, I really don't know. Um, um, listening is probably the best advice I ever got. Um, and I got that on a, a theatre job I was doing. A uh, director was called Indu Rubisingham. Um, uh, a lovely director. Um, 
and she she just reminded me and she reminded all of us that it's listening just listen listen to what's being said and it will affect how you perceive it and how you then deliver your next line so it's you know it's a game of catch so no. listen now, obviously, over the years, you have played so many amazing characters, but is there a role or a, a project you would love to do going forward that you haven't had the, ch the chance to do yet? I would, ever since I was little, I've always wanted to be in a Western. Oh, riding horses, shooting guns, the old stick shooter. Oh, you know what? That, that would be a dream. That would be a dream job for me, um, whether or not that's ever going to happen. I might have to take my iPhone out into the field and uh, just ride around on a horse for a bit. But yeah, I'd love to do a Western. Now, I just also wanted to briefly talk about the amazing NHS. Obviously, we touched a bit on the, our, you know, upon them uh, during our, you know, sort of the whole wee section of the chat. But for you, obviously, you know, playing a member of the NHS, for you, what's, what's been your thoughts on just, not just the amazing work they've done the last couple of years, but just, you know, since the year dot, what, what's, what's been your opinion of them and, and your thoughts on them? I think the NHS stands head and shoulders above anything. Um, I don't think for a lot of people, they realise how wonderful it is because they've never really needed it. It's always there, you know, and if something's always there, it's, sometimes it's really quite easy to just brush it to one side. It, it doesn't really hold any importance but until you need it. Um, and when you do need it, they do everything and anything they can to make you right, to make you whole, um, at no cost. I find that a wonderful, amazing, I mean, heroic, you know, outfit of people that don't get paid very well that work horrendous hours, sometimes, you know, in, you know, not the best conditions. I mean, you know, a lot of hospitals have been needed to be, you know, re -reno renovated because they're, you know, below par and yet, yet the care is first class. So I have a real fondness for the NHS, not just because I played in it, but because my family have relied on it. Um, I've used it. And yeah, I, I, I think um, it's just the best. There is nothing finer than the NHS. And I mean, of course, we, I just wanted to briefly mention the amazing work that Holby did while it was on the air. Obviously, it donated a lot of you know, ventilators to, to the NHS um, in the height of the lockdown. So, I mean, to, to be a part of a show that, that was doing things like that must have been amazing. Oh, I mean, absolutely. Um, but... You know, the, the cast would always get together and as soon as this was happening, you know, the cast was saying, well, maybe we could, you know, donate some stuff. Um, and so we went up to, you know, the powers that be and they said, we're already sorting it. It was the first thing that they thought of was what have we got that we can now give to other people? And rightly so, you know. Um, we were fortunate enough to be able to buy some ventilators uh, to update our set. And as we did that, um, we went into lockdown. So what's the point when ventilators were really quite thin on the ground to have ventilators that are good, just, they're sitting there doing nothing? Let's let other people use them. And um, I think we donated all of our PPE, um, uh, uh, lots of things that we had um, that could be useful you know uh, uh, you know our show wasn't the only show that did it I mean I'm sure lots of shows did it and you know lots of you know non-film businesses they all did the same um, it was uh, a beautiful time a terrible time for everyone going into lockdown and the amount of people that sadly passed um, and got really ill from it but actually, it was a, it was a, a quite a beautiful time to see so many people going, right, what can I do? Um, so, yeah, yeah, a nice little moment in our history. 
Now, I just want to say it's been a pleasure talking to you. But before we go, is there any messages you'd like to give to anyone who's currently stuck in hospital at the moment? Is there anything, anything you'd like to say to them? Well, if you can get Dave, you can see Classic Casualty, Classic Holby, Classic The Bill. Um, I mean, I plow. I'm on there a lot. Um, it just depends how bad you feel. I mean, if you want cheering up, then probably don't watch anything I've done. Um, but no, I just get some rest get some sleep, trust in the people that are around you because they are there to help look after you, support you, put you back together. Um, and yeah, just get well, stay safe. And yeah, try and find me on something else at some point. <laughs> <laughs> now, I just want to say it's been an absolute pleasure. Of course, keep safe. Thank you for giving up your time and you are welcome back anytime. It's an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much, Matthew.